Lord's table is open to all. All are welcome at this table. We do have gluten-free and alcohol-free alternatives to the Eucharist. If that's something that you need, just let us know. Uh, so we'll get right to it. Um, just a few things we need to keep in our prayers this week. Uh, the first is the loss of Tina's older brother. I'm sorry his name jumped out of me. Rick. Yeah, we, we need to keep Rick and his family in prayers on his loss. Um, there is, they are, there is going to be some sort of celebration of life or something, and we'll let you all know when that is. Um, so please keep that family in prayer. Also, Charm will be having a surgery on Tuesday. Um, so if we can keep Charm in prayer, that would be great um, as, as she gets, gets through that process. Um, just an update on Tracy. We're, we're sort of past the whole COVID stuff. However, Tracy's developed either a stomach bug or apparently there's some sort of post-COVID upset stomach stuff so so just when we're like yay we've turned the corner it's you know so please keep her in prayer it's been a frustrating process for her so please keep her in prayer um things that i wanted us to kind of point out i got a note that's not in the bulletin inreach is going to be meeting tomorrow at four so monday at four is an inreach meeting um also we need to think about um, if there is some cookie bakers, if you're interested in helping bake cookies, I think they're going to do it on the 6th and 7th of September. God's work, our hand, hands will be on that Sunday the 8th. As far as when and where and how we do that, we're still working that out, So, but if Tina could just at least have your name so she could know who, what bakers bakers we have yeah you're all bakers but who want to help with cookies that'd be great um just a kind of thing in the future to keep on your radar screen god's work our hands is the eighth it's going to be a big day everybody wear their yellow shirts um some people who requested some shirts they're out in the narthex for those people who requested the you got yours <laughs> yeah um, get your shirts, wear your shirts. Delivery will be, we will deliver cookies at 9.30, 9 o'clock, Tina? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. So we'll be sending folks out to the rescue workers and all at 9 o'clock. Confirmation starts, and that's going to be at 9.30. So um, all the confirmands. You're starting your year, so we're look, looking forward to it. So that's a big day. So please keep the 8th on your calendar. There will also be breakfast kind of foods for anybody who would like to have that. Are there any other announcements? Anything I missed? Anybody I missed? If not, then let's take this moment with our prelude as we prepare to come into our Lord's presence. <laughs>
please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. Love, people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family. For life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the world that you nourish our souls with your body and blood let us pray to the Lord let us pray to the Lord The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life and with that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
The first reading is from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. <clears throat> and Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, <clears throat> Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among all peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The psalmody from Psalm 34 will be read responsively. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The second reading is from Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. <clears throat> Therefore, Take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to stand quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. Whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue of Capernaum. When many of the disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if I were what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who was the one that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God, the Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. I hope that the Lord to whom shall we go does not sound unfamiliar to you, right? If you've been a lifelong Lutheran, every Sunday you've had Eucharist, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go, right? Or whatever. Alleluia. You know, this is, this is the central opening of the gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Um, this is building off what we did last week. And this is kind of an exciting time for preachers because guess what? We go back to the Gospel of Mark next week. Thank you, Jesus. And we don't have to do Epiphany. This is the last Sunday we do the Epiphany stuff, too. So, Or not Epiphany, Ephesians. Too many E words. The Ephesians text. Um, it feels like we're getting into fall now, right? And fall is close. Um, summer is almost over. So, uh, you know, thinking about autumn and This drives my wife crazy. I don't do decades well, right? I'm okay. Let me explain. I'm okay when I'm 27, but man, 30 seems like a lot. And I do okay when I'm 47, but 50 sounds like a lot. Guess how old I am right now? I'm 57, and guess what? 60 sounds like a lot, right? (laughs) Oh God! <laughs> so, so the reason I is is autumn is sort of my season, right? No, no, no not I'm not going to die. I'm thinking about my career, so I'm kind of on the back half of my career, right? That's that's I've got many years to go, but. I got many more behind. There's this one thing that we blessedly don't have here at First Lutheran. And we don't have the rogues gallery of past pastors. We don't have that. We don't, I don't, and, and, you know, after me, sure, do it all you want, but it's kind of nice that we don't. But I got a phone call from a friend who had just, joined, who had just with his wife, joined St. James Lutheran Church. And he saw me on, not only do they have the pastors, but they have 
sons and daughters of the congregation. So they had a picture of me at the age of, I don't know, 24. And he goes, I didn't know. And so it made me think about those pictures, and I, I hang on several of those walls. You know, I'm at, uh, there's a, I'm at Center Grove and Atonement, and I'm on those walls. And I remember as a kid looking at those pictures and thinking, who are they? Right? And at whatever age I was at the time, 12, 13, it was like they were just faces on a wall. Right? They're just they're just faces on the wall. And I'm at that point in my career that guess what? I'm just a face on the wall. Right? It's just another person who probably, if you met him today, would be 30 years older than they were on that picture on the wall. Just another person. Um, you become really aware as a, of a pastor that, you know, this idea of legacy, you know, what legacy do I leave? After time, it gets forgotten. It just sort of, you know, you're just another face on the wall. So it makes you wonder, what, what is all this work for? What is all this work about? Right? What, is, what, is my, what is my stamp that I leave upon first the day I am no longer the pastor? What difference will it have made? When I'm deep into my retirement, who will remember me? Um, and then I think of Ecclesiastes. Now we all we think of Ecclesiastes as this beautiful, this beautiful to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. But if you really, really read the text, really read it closely. There's an important verse that helps you understand the te text, and that is, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. <clears throat> so Jesus is telling these people something that they cannot get their heads around. Um, and it, and it's, there's a couple of verses after this that I didn't read, but you probably shouldn't understand do you know what happens right after this text? The, the, it even mentions the person in the text, the one who was to betray him. This is the point where in the Gospel of John, Judas says, that's enough. I, that's too far. And this is when Jesus gets betrayed. Because we don't know why the, the disciples are offended. We know it's one of two things. And it's interesting, what are disciples in the Gospel of John? It's whoever's following him around. And we've gone from 5,000 men to, I don't know, however many men followed him to Capernaum, to now we're just down to 12, the 12 original disciples, who are offended at these words. We don't know if they're offended because it goes against Levitical law to mess with flesh and blood, and Jesus is talking about eating flesh and drinking blood, and not only talking about eating, eating anybody's flesh, eating my flesh and drinking my blood, which is weird, from a, particularly from a Jewish perspective. Or is it the proclamation that Jesus is God? Which offended them? Which was, and, and it, it, it says in the text, who, who can understand this or who can, really probably the better understanding is who can hear this? Who can hear, this is too much, Jesus. God in our presence. It's at this, it's the, this point where Jesus is saying, what is real? What, what, is, what is real? 
And no, Jesus is not actually talking about drinking blood and eating flesh. But he kind of is. What is real? What is real in this world? Where do we live? Where do we abide? It is Jesus. It's Jesus. This is where we live. This is the one who is with us when we are born, when we live, when we die, and when we rise. It is the only thing that is real. Everything else is vanity. And you know who the people who figure that out? They're the ones who have basically dropped their nets and quit being money changers. They're the 12 who've gone, we've given it all away, Jesus. And they're saying the truth. Where else are we going to go? What else do we have? Right? That's the... And, and, and that sounds like des- desperate. It kind of is. But you know what? That's okay because we reach those points in our lives when all the other things fade away. All of the identities, all the wealth or money or status or whatever positions we hold, all that goes away. And I'm just at the age where I'm feeling it a lot. Legacy, when I look at the wall, legacy goes away. That is not what mattered. When you look at that face on the wall, what that person added to the community is forgotten. But that is not what matters. Right? That's vanity. Think of the times in your life where when you, ha- you just had nothing else. Well, there's just nothing else. I-, I think about the time when I was preparing for surgery and I was alone in a surgery room just minutes away from being completely put out to, s- to sleep, afraid of what the future was going to hold, afraid of what my body was going to be like, not knowing what was going to be on the other side of the big sleep of surgery. And guess what? Finding no comfort in doctors and no comfort in nurses. And you know why I didn't find comfort in them? Because that's not their job. And you know what? I want them to do their job. It wasn't their fault. And that's the moment where I go, I got nothing except Jesus. People in grief. People in pain. Funerals, when you do a funeral, what are you saying to people? Because funerals, I say this over and over, are, are really not for the dead. The dead are fine. The funerals are for us, the living. Because when that person leaves our life, our lives turn in a different direction. Our lives are different. And we don't know what that means. Right? And we grasp for what is real and what is eternal and what gives us meaning. And it's not our jobs, <laughs> it's not our wealth, it's not our status, it's not our title. Why, when we sing this, do we say, Alleluia? And then say, Lord, what else are we going to (laughs) go? The good news is what we hold on to in the breaking of bread and the drinking of that little cup, (laughs) that little piece of Hawaiian bread, because boy, y'all love it, and that Manischewitz wine. I, I, I constantly take a dig at that. Right? What do you what do you taste? When it's just another Sunday, when you're in grief and when you're afraid, what do you taste? You taste eternity. And there's nothing else that matters. 
right? So when I, when I think about my name, my kind of nameless face on the wall, it doesn't matter, except it does. Because what did I do when I was 22 and 27 and 32 and now 57? What did I do? Jesus loves me. This I know. Don't play the song. <laughs> For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. That's what's real. Love is real. And that's what matters. Everything else, the wall of the rogues, of pastors and former sons and daughters of the congregation. It's just, that's a vanity project. What's real? You know what's real? This moment. This moment. Some of you don't see it. Some of you are thinking about the week in front of you. Some of you are worried about whatever you're worried about. Some of you are just bored. Right? That's okay. Some of you are dealing with a diagnosis. And some of you are grieving loss. And some of you are uncertain about the future. This moment is what's real. Jesus loves you. Right? Does it offend you to hear that all the other titles are just dust? This moment matters. For you to hear the words, you're loved. Right? And in the end, all we got is Jesus. And that's all we need. Amen.
God has made us God's people through our baptism in Christ. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead the church to put its trust in Jesus, the living word. Direct preachers, teachers, writers, and all the baptized in faithful speech and bold witness. Merciful God. Creator God, we and all creation are sustained by your word. We pray for all who remind us of our interconnectedness with all living things. Prosper the work of conserv cons conservation organizations, ELCA advocacy, and local climate justice advocates. Merciful God. God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election cycle, guide our leaders to act justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and bring about change where you see feet. Sustain all who serve our, on juries in their deliberations. We also pray for peace in this world and continue to pray for the wars in the Holy Lands, the Ukraine, and Russia. Merciful God. God of new life, protect students and teachers from a new school year. Bring an end to school shootings and cycles of violence. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. Merciful God. God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you. Where pain is sharp, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender mercy. Care for those on our heart. We especially pray for Pam, Charm, Pastor Bob, Rick, Jack, Carrie, Norma, Margie, for Bob and Sandy, for Norma's daughter Judy, for Dan, Laura, Roy and Gracie, Lee, Pauletta, Willie Ruth, and Mary. Be with all those on our prayer list, for those we name silently in our hearts, or for those we now name aloud. Merciful God. God of every generation, we remember with thanksgiving Rick Foster, Susan Bazell, Russell Briggs, and all who have completed their baptismal journeys. Strengthen us in our baptismal callings to serve you faithfully until our journeys end. Merciful God. Amen. 
We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. You. Let us show and share, Lord. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life. We
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all sinners. Dear Lord, we pray in your mercy to forgive. And do this in the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Amen. Amen. Pour out your Holy Spirit that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O God, and teach us to pray.
Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come to the feast.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gift of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life. We have us. Eternal God whose glory is revealed in the crucified and risen Lord, bless those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with our sisters and brothers who are unable to be with us today. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this communion in the body and blood of your Son, that we may all feast upon your abundant love made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ.